Hard knock, you already know what it is. Ghost Riders. I, I saw you got on Twitter about that. I know you got something to say about that. Listen, man, I know people always call me the, the KGB of rap. I said that as a joke one time and people started saying it because I know a lot about everybody else's business. Um, part of the way I keep that relationship and keep knowing about everybody else's business is that I don't put other people's business out there. I know that a lot of people use ghostwriters. Um, the only time that I ever had somebody else write some for me was like maybe a hook, which they were doing on it as well, you know what I mean? Like that is something completely different. You know, I, 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 I asked the public, how do you feel about ghostwriters? 95% of the people that wrote me back were like, look, if that's not really you, then what the fuck? You know, I don't know about that situation. I can't call that. It's not my place to speak on another man's business. If I wasn't in the studio and I didn't see it, that's just conjecture. You know what I mean? Then I'm just, then I'm just spreading rumors. You know what I mean? And I think that what was so bad about that was that it was done in such a way where it was like someone was accusing Jay of something and then rather than address that, the person throw Nas under the, well, what, what Jay say what he feel. Nas don't even say, you know what I mean? And it's not her fault. I know she's a good person. I known her for years, but it was just the way it was said. I think that set up this conversation to not be a constructive dialogue, but to be an accusatory, you didn't write anything of what, and that's not what she said. She ain't said you never wrote Illmatic, or you never wrote I Am, or you ain't never write this. They were talking about the last album. You know, but like I said, because I'm not there, I can't speak on that. Whereas other, anybody else would be so willing to give you their opinion about it. I don't know what the hell that happened between them, you know? Not speaking of Nas in particular, but just ghostwriting in, in general. Do you, I, I know you ask people what their thought, what's your thought? Is, is it is it hip hop? Is it not hip hop? Listen to me. <laughs> hip hop is very different art form than other places, you know? For example, in acting, people know you have a script. George Clooney ain't write his lines. Denzel didn't write his lines. Somebody directed Denzel and said, don't say it like that, homie. Smile and say, my man, and cock your head like that. A director told you to do that, my dude. Your swag is given to you by somebody else that understands the game. That, I think that's something that people don't really understand. And yet, there, someone hit me up and was like, yo, but rappers aren't actors. And I was like, of course they are. Niggas talk about killing people all the time. You ain't never killed nobody. And you ain't never gonna kill nothing or let nothing die. Talk about being a hustler. I know a lot of y'all niggas backgrounds. Y'all not hustlers. You know? I went to prison. I never claim I went to the hardest prison, but I know what it's like to face that cage. I know what it's like to be held in solitary confinement for over a month and not see the fucking sun and, and, and live in that misery. That doesn't make me realer or more street than anybody else. That gives me a different perspective and it enables me to talk to youth and it gives me the responsibility of telling young brothers, especially black and Latino people that are filling those prisons, that's not a rite of passage. You don't want that life. You want the life that's supposed to come after that. You don't want the life that has you on a street corner at four o'clock in the morning thinking you cool because you don't know nothing about Africa or nothing about Latin America or nothing about where you come from. That's not the life you want. You imagine that if you live that life where you hustle and grind, that eventually you'll get enough money that you can move to the Philippines and live in a private island on your own. And guess how many niggas actually get to live that life? None of them. You don't want that life. You want the life that's supposed to come after that. And I think that the ghostwriting thing is really kind of based on that too. You know, they individuals that maybe had all the time in the world to write before, and now they run in a company, they gotta go on tour, someone's saying, here, here's a deadline for your record, you know what I mean? It's in two weeks, you ain't written shit. I understand that, you know what I mean? But the difference is that I think in hip hop, there's just, and it's, I'm not saying it's good, I'm just saying that that's the difference. No one's gonna come up to Al Pacino and say, hey, Tony, how many keys you got? They know he's playing a role. But there was a young brother, and I only use this example because it broke my heart when I, when I heard it. And I, there was a brother named Dollar, a rap artist who was murdered. And the brother that murdered him got off because he said, yo, this nigga had gangster rap lyrics in his shit. Well, I believe that's what, that's what the case was about. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong. And, and 
within the defense, the scope of the defense was saying, if this individual portrays himself as a gangster, how the fuck was my client supposed to know that he wasn't going to pull out a gun and kill him? So by that logic, since, you know, I don't know, Don Cheeto played a, a terrorist in a movie one time, how do I know that he's not carrying bombs at the airport? Strip search that nigga, arrest him. What? The fuck are you doing? That's the unfair thing that hangs over the head of hip hop. But at the same time, it's a double-edged sword because it makes hip hop one of the realest art forms in the world where people really expect you to live up to that shit. And I think that at some point it's changing a little bit now. You know, nowadays, I'm not saying it's soft, but it's definitely not as aggressive a sport or aggressive a music as before. And I think that's because kids grew up in a much better situation. New York in 1988 is not New York in 2012. New York in 2012 is Disneyland. I can't take niggas seriously that talk to me about pitching you know, tons of, the crack era is over, homie. We're talking about pills and meth now. That's what y'all niggas is out there doing. And fake weed. What the fuck is that, yo? Fake weed? That's what y'all niggas is doing? Bass, Ackwoods, hustling? That just doesn't make no sense to me. But I mean, that, that's the difference. I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to take away anything from the rappers today. They're very gifted, very talented new breed of people. I mean, this is nothing about anybody. It has nothing to do with age. I'm just saying that you grew up in a much better time. Congratulations. Please do something with it, with that. Please use that to, to take hip hop back. Do something that our pioneers couldn't do, which is own your masters, own your publishing. God damn it, do that for other people. Don't just sit there and say, okay, well, I'm gonna do the same thing these other executives are doing. Be original, yo. Don't rape your artists. Give something back to the community. Pick your sponsors more carefully so we own, don't end up with shit that gives you cancer and fucking heart disease being promoted at every fucking hip hop show. Believe me, if it was up to me, I'd have tell half these niggas to get the fuck out of here. I know Chang wouldn't like that. Chang probably don't like the fact I said that now, but you know, fuck y'all. Half of y'all niggas need to get the fuck out of here. You know, I won't even tolerate that on stage with me. He's like, oh, bring that the energy drink, nah, 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 rip the, rip the labels off that water. They're not paying me. No energy drink. Nigga, I don't drink that. Why am I gonna promote that to kids, yo? What you really need is a thumb up your butt. Whoa. Do you have a thumb up your butt? Nah, not me, but you need that. What you really need is a fucking drink that don't do nothing except raise your heart rate. Is that what you drink technique? Nah, nah. What's the difference? Something invasive? Sickening. Uh, when you talked about the future of hip hop, in my eyes, it's coming back around a little bit. I feel like it's, there's a little bit more lyricism going on in, in, in some of the new generation. Uh, do you see that at all? Do you see like some of the cats that are starting to break? Yeah, some, yeah some, some... there's definitely lyricism. There's, there's, there's a good amount of lyricism, and I think that people are going to grow into that. You know, a, a, a rapper needs knowledge like a sword needs a sharpening stone. You know what I mean? You got to read, you got to understand. Talk to me about different things. I don't care what niggas rhyme about. I always, even when I did the prison programs, I told these young people, I don't care if you rap about selling drugs, you rap about, you know, all this extracurricular shit, just make it interesting. You know what I mean? Like, for example, tell me what it's like to sell crack to a pregnant woman. Tell me what it's like to sell drugs, which are the same drugs that you saw your parents grow up abusing. Because most people that I know that are hustlers got introduced to drugs at a very young age because they saw their parents with crack or cocaine or heroin or something like that. Where do you think you learn to cut an eight ball by the time you're 13, 14 years old and you want to block? Come on, man. You're cooking up cakes at 15. Somebody taught you that. It wasn't your homeroom teacher, you know? I think that, that's incredibly important that we, that we discuss these things, that we say, make it interesting, yo. Tell me what it's like to lose a shipment and have these niggas trying to kill you. Tell me what it's like to, to, to listen to the radio and hear niggas glamorizing a lifestyle that ain't, that ain't glamorous. You ain't never wipe no blood off your fucking hands. You grab a microphone and you rap on stage. You ain't never had to kill nobody and then see somebody in your dreams that you know is dead. You ain't never had to be on no freezing corner until 5 o'clock in the morning because you can't make fucking Section 8 rent. You over there flipping birds because you desperate to get the fuck out the hood. Tell me an interesting story. Make it original, be original, and go independent. 
that's the lesson of the day. You know, I love all the new upcoming MCs that are coming out there that are taking control of their careers economically. They should serve as an example and they should lead by example. And not only that, but they should be out there spreading that gospel over and over and over again. That's my only issue with that, with the new generation. I think they should be more vocal about being independent. That's it. Besides that, I, I can't tell niggas what to rhyme about. I can't tell them about no clothes they wear. You know why? Because niggas in the 80s was wearing some skinny ass jeans. I'm not mad at y'all niggas. You know, wear whatever the fuck you want. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever squirts your pickle. You know, I'm nobody to judge. You know, I can't tell y'all niggas about your lifestyle. Whatever.